to order. At the outset, colleagues, remind you the mobile phones, um, if you could either turn them to flight mode or off, they interfere with the meeting, but they also interfere with the recording and broadcast of the proceedings. In accordance with, standing, with standard procedures agreed by the Committee on Procedure and Privileges for paperless committees, all documentation for the meeting has been circulated to members on the document database. I propose that we now go to private session to deal with correspondence and other matters. Is that agreed? We're now in public session, so good, good morning and you're very welcome. Uh, before we proceed, once again, colleagues and witnesses, uh, if you have mobile phones, either switch them off or to flight mode, please. I wish to draw your attention to the fact that by virtue of Section 17.2L of the Defamation Act 2009, witnesses are protected by, abs by absolute privilege in respect of their evidence to this committee. However, if you're directed by the committee to cease giving evidence in relation to a particular matter and you continue to so do, you're entitled thereafter only to a qualified privilege in respect of your evidence. You're directed that only evidence connected with the subject matter of these proceedings is to be given and you're asked to respect the parliamentary practice to the effect that, where possible, you should not criticise nor make charges against any person, persons or entity by name or in such a way as to make him, her or it identifiable. The opening statement submitted to the committee will be published on the committee website after the meeting and members are reminded of the long-standing parliamentary practice to the effect that they should not comment on, criticise or make charges against a person outside the House or an official either by name or in such a way as to make him or her identifiable. I'd like to welcome Social Justice Ireland, who are represented today by Michelle Murphy. Uh, the full submission from Social Justice Ireland has been made available to members. And at the, this stage, Ms M uh, Murphy, if you'd like to make an opening presentation or a summary of that, and colleagues will then have a number of questions for you. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Deputies. Social Justice Ireland welcomes the opportunity to make a presentation to the Committee on Social Housing Supply. The scale of the social housing challenge that Ireland faces is immense. Securing sufficient finance to provide the scale of social housing required is a major challenge to government. There is no possibility of providing the level of financing required to deal with the scale of the problem on the government balance sheet within the current fiscal rules. Social Justice Ireland recommends that government put in place an off-balance sheet mechanism that could access the low-cost finance required to address the lack of supply of social housing sufficient to eliminate current waiting lists. In recent years, government policy was based on the premise that the private sector would provide sufficient rental accommodation to meet the total need for accommodation in Ireland. However, the private sector is nowhere near delivering the number of units required to meet the demand. While the social housing strategy is very welcome, even if it does succeed in providing the planned level of increase in social housing, this will be far from the level required to eliminate housing waiting lists. The strategy is not going to meet demand unless a new approach is taken to secure the necessary finance, so further initiatives on a much larger scale are required. The key challenge is to increase the supply of housing generally and of social housing in particular. Increasing the supply of social housing units will take the pressure off the private rental market and supply in the private sector. It will also take families out of hotels and enable them to find a home, to build a base and to participate in a community and in society. Consequently, Social Justice Ireland recommends that the government fully resource the social housing strategy and expand its scale to effectively eliminate the current waiting list of 90,000 households, while also providing for the increased demand for social housing in the coming years. It will not be possible for government, government to finance this level of provision on the books because of the fiscal rules that have been, have been adopted since the crash. Therefore, a viable means of financing this provision off the books is urgently required. Social Justice Ireland proposes that government put off-balance sheet financing structures in place to generate sufficient capital to finance the supply of new social housing needed to eliminate the current waiting lists and also to meet the additional demand that will emerge as our population grows and to explore the utilisation of NAMA as a housing agency with the ability to access and distribute appropriate off-balance sheet funding and to take an active role in the direction and support of approved housing bodies. Our proposal contains two components, one of which is the provision of an off-the-books financing mechanism for social housing stock through a special purpose vehicle, to be followed by the introduction of a cost rental system for social housing where the differential rent ceiling is removed. For the purpose of this brief presentation, I'll focus primarily on the financing component. It's clear that the Exchequer cannot provide the funding necessary to deal with current demand. 
We propose the government put in place off-balance sheet mechanisms to access the low-cost finance required to address the supply issue. Ireland cannot continue to borrow using traditional methods because this adds to the government deficit which we are committed to reduce. At the same time, there needs to be an adequate supply of housing for those on low incomes. This is required to stabilise the rental market and to enable a cost-based rental system to work within this market. One possibility that Social Justice Ireland recommends would be to use a vehicle such as NAMA, which has the expertise in developing a financing mechanism. Given the fact that there are approximately 107,000 social housing units owned by local authorities and paying rent regularly, it should be possible to put together a proposal that meets the Eurostat conditions for an acceptable off-balance sheet initiative. One of the advantages of using NAMA is that it already has a special purpose vehicle that has been approved by Eurostat. And it is worth noting in this context that Eurostat classification of public-private partnerships implies that this method is unlikely to be suitable to address the supply of social housing units as government would be required to take on the construction risk, meaning that the PPP expenditure would remain on balance sheet. Social Justice Ireland proposes that once the stock of social housing supply increases to such an extent that waiting lists have been eliminated, the government should then move to a cost rental system for social housing stock and remove the differential rent ceiling. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Ms Murphy. Okay, I have, I have a number of uh, colleagues uh, indicating they want to ask questions, so I'll take a couple of them together and then you might answer them in that. Deputy O'Brien. Thanks, Chair, and thanks, Michelle, for the presentation. Just two questions, um, and the, the model that you've outlined is one that a number of us, when we were in local authorities, were arguing to, to try and increase the, the availability of finance to local authorities as supposed to build. On the back of the Eurostat decision in relation to Irish Water, uh, there are those who argue that um, funding essentially public housing, uh, local authority housing off balance sheet is much more difficult in practice than it is in theory. And I'm just wondering, um, have you looked at that Eurostat ruling uh, and have you thought in terms of, of whether or not the decisions in relation to Irish water not being off balance sheet have a relevance to this? Because I think that's quite important. The second thing is in terms of the use of NAMA, um, uh, who would own the stock? So if NAMA was the vehicle, uh, would the stock be NAMAS? Would it be uh, uh, some other entity like an approved housing body? Or, uh, and have you thought about that just in terms of the ownership of it? Uh, and who would fund the building? Would it be, for example, from borrowing from the housing finance agency or from the private sector or from NAMAS' own cash reserves and surplus? So again, have you teased out some of that detail? Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Deputy Durkin. Thank you, I, I welcome um, Ms. Murphy's address to the committee and, and thank you for her, for her constructive approach. Uh, I, I, I think we all agree, and I would agree with the last speaker as well, that it is imperative that we uh, identify a means of the off-balance sheet funding of local authority housing. It's, it's, it, this, this is a major national social and economic issue because it means the the, 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 the ability of families to, to obtain a house which is a basic requirement in any society. Can I, can I, can I just say that uh, as well in support that it should be possible, notwithstanding Eurostat and, and, and the issues that they have raised, this is a, is a, a fundamental issue, in, in the, the, the right to a home, the need for a home. There is a need for a home an absolute need for home. If we cannot solve this particular problem, then we cannot solve any other problem. So this is the primary one. So I would, I would say that, that um, I believe, and I support the, the, the suggestions put forward, I think that NAMA may have a contribution to make, and I think we have all agreed that we should, we should achieve what we can, insofar as we can, through that medium, and others as well. But I am a great believer of the basic uh, uh, issue of uh, provision of local authority housing by the local authorities through the local authorities and whatever public private partnership or whether it's a framework still to be agreed in terms of the off balance sheet funding it's imperative that we do it and that we do it so quickly because it, the, the longer we go, we wait a decision the worse the problem gets and the more forlorn the people who are on waiting list of local authorities will get so that I, 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 I support the, the, the submission in principle and as I said earlier, there are a number of people who are willing to work out the mechanics 
of how to achieve the off-balance sheet funding. And they're, they're, they're willing to make submissions and, and have made submissions, and some of us have tried through the local authorities. And I think, for instance, that there's no problem, there should be no problem in working out a joint venture between the local authorities mm. and a, 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 a bank or a, 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 the credit unions, and we had them before, with a view to ensuring that the local authorities take responsibility for the provision of local authority housing and in, in the first instance. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Deputy Coppinger. Oh, thanks. I thought there was others ahead of me. Um, Day, Deputy. <laughs> well, uh, just uh, this whole issue of off balance sheet and special purpose vehicles is going to be absolutely critical to the whole, this committee. <clears throat> and uh, next week, obviously, we've got departments and people coming in on that. Th this is really complex in that I agree with you that it now should be used and is absolutely instrumental to solve, resolve them. I've said that for, you know, two years now. Mainly because in, in Dublin, for example, where obviously a lot of the housing crisis, but not exclusively, is located, NAMA currently controls a third of all the development land. And also, NAMA has you know, control of a lot of the... Uh, it's, it is a major operation. The difficulty is this. Um, when NAMA was set up in 2009, different rules applied. Um, and it seems that Eurostat keep changing the rules as well. So if, would it not be the case that if NAMA got involved in social housing, they would breach the rules? Um, I raised this with Simon Coveney, a very brief meeting that he had with all the partners, or with the parties, and obviously um, we'll raise it with him again. He said it would then not be a special purpose vehicle off balance sheet. Um, one of the things I will put to you, uh, do you agree with this or what's your view? Uh, and I raised this the other day. The EU fiscal rules don't prohibit spending if commensurate revenue is raised to pay for that spending, which is never really discussed. Like the government just rule out, oh no, we can't do that, off balance sheet. But you could introduce a whole range of, for example, taxes. If you want to call them housing crisis taxes, you can. And I know we keep hearing that there isn't a, a shilling in the country, like, but um, the evidence would suggest otherwise. And, you know, we've already said it, the rich list would indicate that the 250 richest in Ireland have a third of GDP. But they increase their wealth by about 3%. So, for example, a 3% wealth tax or you could enforce the 12.5% corporation tax rate. We estimated in the Anti-Austerity Alliance that that would raise two billion this year, but actually it would raise more because their profits have increased this year by 25%, the top 1,000 companies in Ireland. Um, so there are, I, I, I'm, I'm putting it to you that if we have to raise money for you know, social housing and affordable housing, that um, it just seems like the off-balance sheet thing is impossible. An official in the Department of the Environment said on the This Week programme, um, where's my quote gone? He basically said anyway that um, it was impossible to do anything off-balance sheet now, given the rules that exist. And um, I think we have to tease this out. The, yeah, he, he's in the Department's new funding models. And he concluded no new model that would itself be capable of providing and or financing social housing on an off-balance sheet basis has emerged. So it would seem to me that either we breach the EU rules and we say, sorry, we are not abiding by those rules. They are paralysing our country. They're enforcing you know, a housing crisis on hundreds of thousands of people and impoverishing many others in rent, by the way. But also, if we don't do that well, then we're enslaved to con continue this housing crisis on. But we could also propose new funding being raised by taxation on those who can afford it, progressive taxation on wealth. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, I'll allow you to answer, but I just think from the committee's point of view, this whole area, as you can see, of the off-balance sheet is quite important. And I suppose to remind colleagues, specifically as a result of a request from Deputy Coppinger, we will have the Department of Finance 
specifically to tease out this further, and, I, and you do make the point, and it's probably worth exploring a little bit further, NAMA already has a special purpose vehicle which is off balance sheet in terms of the properties it's yes. providing. So if you'd like to take those and then I'll have a number of other questions for you. Yep. Thank you very much, Chair. So I'll just start with Deputy O'Brien. Just in terms of the Eurostat decision on Irish water, uh, I suppose in terms of Irish water there wasn't any actual collateral. The way we would see this is that you'd reconfigure NAMA as a, a housing body or a housing agency as recommended by NESC in their 2014 report because NAMA has a special purpose vehicle that was approved in 2009 specifically to deal with property development. And the key issue here is that this SPV will have a majority of private equity. And where we would see the funding coming from is that we would see the this uh, NAMA or the reconfigured NAMA taking the expertise from local authorities and using at least half of the money available from the Irish League of Credit Unions and then going to the markets to borrow at very low rates. The fact of the matter is this SPV has already been approved. So the, the issue is how you reconfigure NAMA as a housing body to go out and borrow the money required to address the issue. In terms of who owns the stock, that is the issue because if you're going to use the public-private partnership model, if you are considered the economic owner, then the risk has to remain on balance sheet. So the stock would have to be, you would have to be considered not the economic owner, so therefore the housing body, which would have to be a separate entity, would own the stock through the local authorities. We would see the local authorities being rolled into this. In terms of who... Sorry, does, does yeah, that mean the, yeah. the SPV would own the stock? The well, SPV that becomes the housing body? Yeah, yeah. would yes, own the stock. Say that again clearly. The special purpose vehicle rather than the approved housing body. Well, it's, it wouldn't be a, an approved housing body as such that's a separate, but the housing body or the housing trust that's set up okay, would sorry, control yeah, the SPV. What we would consider, well, there is a housing agency, so you'd have to rename it. Would, 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 would the stock then revert to the local authority at the end of it? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how we would see it, because yeah, yeah. then you would move to a cost yeah, yeah. rental system and, um, and remove your differential rent. So, Can I just yeah. take up that point? Mm -hmm. I think that's a yeah. very dangerous notion to talk cost about rental. removing the differential rent system from council tenants or tenants, because at the moment, say, most people who pay 30% of their income on rent, we don't want to see that happening to social housing tenants. Well, that wouldn't happen until you had sufficient supply, because the point of being you have, would have a huge amount of mixed housing stock then, so the differential rent would be removed once you have sufficient supply, so you can still move to a cost rental system, which is below market rate, but that the approved housing bodies managing then would uh, generate enough income to both maintain the properties and develop them, because the problem at the moment is when you're reliant totally on government funding and capital expenditure, when that disappears, you don't even have the money to maintain your stock. To go back to uh, Deputy Durkin's point, yes, the local authorities do have the expertise in terms of building social housing units, so you need to bring those into play and we would have always advocated using some of the money available from the Irish League of Credit Unions and to go to the markets using that money as well to generate the funding required. And just to talk to Deputy Coppinger um, in terms of the fiscal rules. Yes, uh, the fiscal rules don't prohibit spending, which is entirely correct if you raise commensurate revenue. And there is also um, a possibility for, I suppose, tweaking the fiscal rules in terms of social infrastructure and spending on social infrastructure. And there is nothing to stop the government increasing revenue in order to generate expenditure to fund social housing. I suppose the issue here is the scale of the problem. If you're going to eliminate the waiting lists and build the units required, you're looking at about a 10 billion euros worth of expenditure. So it would be very difficult to raise your revenue over the lifetime of this government to that amount just to fund the social housing issue. We're entirely supportive of increasing government revenue to fund current expenditure and to fund the, the ongoing expenditure that will be related to social housing in terms of rent, well, HAP eventually and rent supplement and the maintenance of the stock, the education system, the health system. But I just think at present and with this issue, even to, it would be very difficult to generate that amount of revenue to build the units required in the time scale that we have at present. 
But, it might, but mm. the chairman, could, would, would it not be possible to alleviate the worst uh, situations in the people involved in emergency housing, which has to be a priority in any event? Absolutely. So, uh, sorry, the Strategic Investment Fund has mm -hmm. about four billion, yes. and NAMA has nearly three billion cash reserves as well. Yes. So I suppose the issue we have here is that there has been. Uh, for want of a better word, inertia in terms of dealing with the problem. Um, because there is, as Deputy Durkin and Coppinger both pointed out, there is funding there, there are reserves, which should be used for this issue because we do have a crisis. Um, I think in general we have an issue in this country when we discuss revenue raising as to what it should be used for. I mean, um, public infrastructure and social infrastructure is funded by revenue and there is a case to be made in the long run, obviously for increasing our tax take, we need a stable and broad tax base if we're going to continue to fund all of our public services. At this stage, I'm going to suspend for a couple of moments. Sorry to do this to you, uh, Michelle. Uh, there's a vote in the Dáil. There are no pairing arrangements. So we'll go and do that vote and we'll resume immediately afterwards. Uh, just before the interruption from the vote, you had completed a series of uh, uh, yes? Yes, okay. and I might just make one point. I might refer the members of the committee, it's a, it's a footnote in our submission, to the Eurostat ruling on the NAMA special purpose vehicle prior to when you've the representatives from the Department of Finance in, because uh, a lot of what you've already mentioned and what will be discussed at that meeting is would be based on the in interpretation of this ruling. So I think it would be very important just for committee members to be aware of it prior to the uh, discussions with the representatives from the Department of Finance because it gives, I suppose, specific details on how the special purpose vehicle should be run and the role of the minister uh, and the role the minister has in determining the duration of the special purpose vehicle, the duration of NAMA and also um, how the special purpose vehicle is both jointly created and the 51%, 49% uh, split in terms of pub public uh, or private investors in NAMA. Thank you. Uh, Deputy O'Dowd. Yeah, I'd like to welcome the comments from uh, Michelle and um I just think that the government building programme is there, it's officially 25,000 a year and if that can be increased by whatever formula it will happen, we can borrow it or the, the finance agency can borrow it, I think 1.2% and they can lend on to local authorities. So I don't think there's any issue really about getting more money. If it's off our own balance sheet, others will decide, but we have to maximise whatever we can get. My question to you is about the... Uh, 200,000 odd houses that are built and are vacant in the country. Now, the government uh, position is that I think 70,000 uh, are to be supplied over the next three or four years from the private sector into into HAP applicants, essentially. Now, I don't see any sign of that happening because uh, there, there, are, there are no houses being released onto the market, uh, but they're there and they're empty. Now, even if two-thirds of them have, have a problem, uh, with whatever it might be, there still must be a third we can get. So what I think our strategy, I don't know what you think it is, that to use, I know Ruth's not here, or she is, oh, yeah. Jimmy, give it out to me. <laughs> uh, what I think we need to do is to have a strategy in place to encourage the owners of those houses to enter into three, four, five year commitments to local authorities or housing agencies so that we can put uh, tenants into them who need housing urgently and in the meantime, you know, when, when we ramp up our building programme and then we can look at those tax incentives again. It's far cheaper for us to get a house that's already built with a small, not a major tax incentive to, to, to an owner than it is to spend, you know, 100, 150, 200,000 on a house. So I think we get a much bigger bang for our buck in that area. Now, I don't know if you have a view on that or not, but it seems to me that it's a crucial and critical way forward to increase supply uh, more or less overnight. Thank you, Deputy. Ms Murphy, do you want to address that particular point? Yes, uh, the, the issue of vacant units... Um, it, they, they have been very slow coming on stream for HAP applicants and there have been a number of reasons for this, either that the, the developments themselves are unfinished, some are in the process of being finished and perhaps uh, the units aren't suitable. We actually made a proposal last year in terms of um, empty units and underdeveloped land that if the units were fit to be um, occupied, that they should be taxed, uh, levied on, a tax would be levied on a monthly basis on those houses 
to encourage the owners to use them to contact the local authorities and to allow them to be occupied by those in social housing waiting lists while we wait for our stock to improve. So that was one of our proposals. Uh, we have actually considered this issue and something we we would like to encourage, I suppose, local authorities uh, to do is to ensure that those units that do come on stream uh, of those 200,000 units are, are suitable and that it seems to be a very slow process in terms of making them habitable. Uh, I can't understand why this process is taking so long given the amount of uh, both construction companies and workers that we have in this country. So there obviously is a blockage in the system there but one of our proposals would be is to impose a levy on suitable empty units which can be occupied